time for me to finally answer one of my most asked questions, and that is which LED mask is actually working. I mean, those ones work fine, but if you want something to work good and be cute, it's this one. It's Cure. This is, this is the one. Is this the best LED mask? We're back, I'm Dr. Shaw. Dr. Maxfield. And welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Today, we are reviewing viral skincare products and skincare devices. This is part of a series where we go through videos that have gone viral, and we talk about whether or not they're worth it, or we think they're worth <laughs> it. So today we're gonna to be talking about LED masks in general. We've done a longer video on this in the past, but specifically we wanna focus on this Cure LED mask, which has gone viral several times on social media. And we wanna talk about whether or not it's quote unquote, the best LED mask. There are so many options out there. Is the tech good? We'll take a look at all of this in this video. <laughs> all right, all things LED masks, here we go. Here we go. So we've talked about LED masks before. We've done deep dive on this topic. And I think one of the most interesting things about my, my LED journey here was how it started. Because like a lot of devices, like a lot of other things, when I was looking into this, going through literature, I actually anticipated that I was gonna hate it. I thought I was gonna debunk this. And as I was going through paper after paper after paper, I was like, golly, this is actually building a pretty convincing golly. argument. <laughs> And it won't be over though. And then since then, I've actually become a big proponent for using these LED masks to kind of complement everything you're doing in your skincare routine. So we did a deeper dive on LED masks. You can always watch our previous video if you wanna know what our final consensus was. But I too, if you've been following me for a long time, have been very skeptical of skincare devices in general. I've always found that they're either, they're expensive and they underperform. So I spent probably the first year of me on social media debunking every vibrating device out there, every microcurrent device out there, every other zappy device that you rolled over your skin. And I was gonna do the same thing to LED, but then we did a deep dive on it like we do with everything. We looked through all the literature and the evidence on LED masks was overwhelmingly positive. And you have the blue light and you have red light. And the blue light specifically is, is targeted towards acne, but it does other things as well. But I really like it for acne treatments because it targets those porphyrins to kill bacteria in the skin. So it's very good for that inflammatory acne. And then you look at red light, which does also help with acne, but it's really meant for anti-aging because it has a longer wavelength that targets fibroblasts to increase collagen production. And we call this photobiomodulation. And this has been shown consistently to improve fine lines and wrinkles. So we both became big proponents of LED masks in general. Now back to this video, she claimed that the Cure mask was the best mask overall, and also it was the cutest mask, which is an interesting claim. But, you know, we actually, so once we did our video, I, I, we have, I feel like we have the vast majority of LED devices available to us, which we're very thankful for, by the way, for, but we have just tons of masks, the devices that go under your eyes, the body devices, which was still competing for the largest package I've ever received. And collectively, um, when we, I think, put together our opinions on this, it's like, how are we gonna weigh this versus the other ones? And so we have to look at things like cost functionality, and then some of our subjective experience with it and just how well it works with daily life. Right, so when we did our initial video, we had maybe tried out like two or three masks at that time. And then we were inundated from companies. Everyone was sending us their LED masks, their LED devices, and having us try them. So we tried all these devices, we got these gigantic packages, and then we're like, okay, which one is the best? And there's actually a lot of nuance to this. I mean, one, we can agree as far as efficacy goes. Do we agree that all the masks are pretty much the same? Yeah, I think they can all be helpful. It's really hard to quantify um, because it's, I mean, there's just no comparative studies. It's really difficult to put one side by side and say it's more effective than another, but I think overall they can be beneficial. Right, so I think that a lot of them have different spectrums of light, but as long as they have both blue light and red light, because of the, those are the ones that have the most data, we have to sort of assume that they all are equally efficacious because no, there's no, never been like a double blind placebo controlled study of you know one compared or comparative study of the two back to back. And so we don't know which one is the most efficacious of the masks. So let's talk about what we do have more objective data or subjective data on here. And so one of those would be the price. Yeah, and so price for any of these masks and devices is actually gonna, you have to think of this a little differently than you think of the rest of your skincare because this is a one-time upfront cost, or it should be, and 
when you're purchasing this, I maybe compare it to maybe 12 months of refills on your favorite serum or something like that, because you're gonna be using this over the course of the year. There's no refills. And so it's an upfront investment. That's where the inertia is, but there's a lot of longevity. And so once that's out of the way, then you can kind of look at the prices and be like, okay, these range from kind of $100 to maybe $500, $600, $700. And where does this mask fall in? It's kind of in the middle. So I don't know if you necessarily want to be buying of the budgetist that you can. I don't know if you necessarily need the bougie. So I think the middle of the road is actually a, an acceptable place to be here. Right, so based on the build of it, you know, you have super low quality ones that can be pretty cheap, pretty plasticky feeling, and like $100 or sub $100, and then you have very expensive ones that don't seem to have increased quality, but they're just more expensive. This kind of falls right in the middle range, which I think is reasonable based on, like Dr. Maxfield said, it's a one-time purchase and you, you get to use it over and over and over again. Not number one in price. So <laughs> let's move on to the next category, and let's talk about the build of this thing, the build quality of the plastic, I guess, that this is made of. Okay, so this this actually combines a little bit of uh, objective and subjective components here. So objectively, you know, we talked about the wavelength spectrum. This goes from blue, I think, to near infrared or infrared, which is a very broad thing. But we're talking about like the packaging, the qualities. This is kind of like a subjective thing. I guess when you get to the, the box, I actually really liked it. They kind of folded out open and there's a nice little shelf. Also, I think a sample size of their serum, which is an amazing serum, but I don't have it with me. The mask itself though, so it, it feels kind of sturdy. It's like feels heavier quality. It has this nice, I mean, I don't honestly know what this is made of, but maybe silicone lining here that really makes it comfortable on your face and then the strap as well is very nice. But it actually, it feels very nice and soft. Not soft. I don't know, it's comfortable. I don't have to say this other than it's pretty comfortable on your skin and it feels sturdy. So I think overall for the build, it's a win there. This is after trying several ones. You have ones that are just more flimsy feeling. They hug the face um, a little bit better, but they don't have that hard outer plastic coating here that has that matte finish. So, and then you have other ones that are very like plasticky feeling. Um, like you said, that the straps break frequently or they never work at all. And so from trying from like just a pure, like not, we're not talking about functionality at all right now, but from a pure quality of the build of the product, I would say that this is probably the best build of the ones of the maybe 10 devices that I've tried. I really do agree. I had this, I've had this, I'm trying to think how long I've had this, a year, maybe a year and a half now, and still going strong. So, I mean, that's definitely outperformed some of the other ones. All right, so then the next category we could consider is the functionality of the device. Does it have a lot of features? Does it have all the light colors that we want to be there? The other question is, does it charge, right? Because that's another really important thing that I didn't even know because a lot of the products I had tried before were wireless, people were starting to send us ones that you had to plug in to work. So that's to me an issue because you, you might wanna be moving around or you may not be near an outlet or you wanna take it with you on vacation and you know you don't wanna be near an outlet or maybe you're in Europe and they don't have the outlet that you need. And so like from, from that perspective, I would say from like a functionality perspective, there's a couple things going for the Cure Mask here. One, it has of course the red light, blue light, but then it also has another spectrum of light in between that aren't as well studied, but can be used. And then you have the app feature, right? So it, it connects to an app so you can actually control which colors are on which part of the face if you really want to have a targeted treatment, if you want to treat acne and aging at the same time type of thing. So really cool functionality within the app. So that's a that's a definitely a win for functionality. And the last piece is that it is chargeable, wireless. So you plug it in, you charge it, the battery lasts for a while, and you don't need to be connected to an outlet. Yeah, I really don't also know of any other ones that connect to a device that you can personalize it. That's a huge win for me because it helps you be deliberate, not only with your skin concerns now, so if you act prone skin, you can use blue and red light on those areas while using red light on exclusively on other areas, but it can grow with you, right? So as you grow out of acne, as that changes, as your skin grows, you can actually just keep this and adjust this. Maybe you don't need the blue light setting anymore and that's okay. So I really like that you can be deliberate with it, personalize it, um, and then just change it as you need. Very cool functionality compared to other devices. I would say that it, it wins with the app functionality and then there are other ones that, that plug in and charge. So it's not necessarily winning in that category, but it's neutral. But overall functionality of the device, I would say, again, a winner in that category. Yeah, absolutely. The next category is, is very subjective, I would argue. <laughs> this is probably the most subjective thing. Is this the cutest mask that you can wear? And does it matter if it's the cutest mask? I think that's very questionable because, but not only that, it's like, are any of these cute? I don't think 
think there's a mask that you could wear out and it would be socially acceptable to go throughout your daily life with it. They are all somewhat dramatic. Um, yeah, I don't know, what do you think? So this is a good question. So I, I think overall this is a very, I, I would say that like from an aesthetic, like when you have it on your shelf or you're wearing it or you're taking a selfie in a product, or you're making a video for social media. I do think that it's probably the most aesthetically pleasing mask. And, I, and I'll tell you, there's a, there's another good reason why, because I actually like the way that the Dennis Gross mask mm -hmm. looks also. I think the other, I think the only ones that kind of are even close in this category would be this, and then the, the Dr. Dennis Gross I agree. mask. I agree, Because the other ones are not cute, I would argue. I don't know. Um, what I think is got going for the Dennis Gross mask is that they have it in black too, which I think is pretty cool. But what I think this one wins is, is that that one actually has a lot of reflective surfaces mm -hmm. on it. So if you're shooting video, it doesn't show well on video because it reflects light. Uh, so I would actually say that, well, one, this has better build quality than that. And two, this is, um, I think, probably more aesthetic, neutral, more that like pastel tones. So I think probably, it is probably the cutest mask, but that's very subjective. Okay, you actually had a good, inter an interesting point too, I think it struck me. He said, he talked about how it sits on your shelf and I actually agree with him there because it is somewhat neutral. It's like this pastel blue color. If you, if you had this hanging up, this would almost be akin to some of those like decorative masks people have hanging on their walls. So not only the color, but the look, and it wouldn't stand out like a robot necessarily, like um, a futuristic robot that might just be out of place like a toy. Ooh, does it, does it win there though? I think it's a marginal win. A win is a win, as the kids are saying on TikTok right now. Okay. So, so I would say, yes, a most attractive mask. But I don't know if I'd make a purchase based on that. <laughs> yes. Well, they're pretty short treatments. And you do this at home. You're using it with some privacy. There's really no situation where you should be using this out in public, like where you're grocery shopping <laughs> or at the pool or something like that. So it's definitely not something to make a decision on. Right. But if you're a content creator, I think that there's some pros right. for this mask if you want to get one. But if you're just, you know, at home, Home, you don't make your own videos, you know, you're just the, the on the skincare consuming side of things, I would say it probably doesn't matter as much. Yeah. And speaking to durability, like there's, I've got quite a few scuff marks on this. I have kids and they like to play with these. Um, so this has been dropped. This has been <laughs> thrown and um, it's still working fine. So, so. overall, um, after trying over 10 or more LED masks, where do we stand? on the LED mask situation. Uh, so we still like collectively the LED masks in general. We still think they functionally work. We think there's science behind it. And that's why we pretty consist, actually consistently, consistently have recommended them since exploring this initially. And then as far as this content creators claim, is this the best? It could be. It didn't, it didn't lose any categories. Correct. So I would say that it doesn't win on price, but you know, you kind of pay for what you get, you get what you, you pay for. So, but in the other categories, I do think yeah. that it's actually the winning device. So, so far of all the devices I've tried, always willing to try more. This so far does come out as the best LED mask on the market, in my opinion, at this time. That being said, you do need to use these consistently to see results. Don't expect to see results in a week, a month even. This is something that's gonna take three months to see results, three months of consistent use if you wanna see results with this. But overall, I agree with your video. I think this is a winning product. There it is. So the Cure Mask wins, the LED device mask went off. All right, we agree with this viral video. If you're interested in LED, worth checking it out. We'll see you all in the next video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time.